So, if you have nothing in common with Tutankhamun, you're not alone. So, just walk like an Egyptian anyway. Because scientists have finally discovered the true purpose of the pyramids. Author Mark Twain once said, It ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. So watch this. The Great Pyramid of Giza is a magnificent tomb that was constructed to highlight the majesty of Egyptian pharaohs. Well, that's what we studied at school. And that's exactly what many researchers thought. Yeah, past tense. Brace yourself, folks, because it looks as if scientists have finally discovered the true purpose of the pyramids. It seems these mysterious and unique structures, built with incredible mathematical precision, might have had a function that was a far cry from burying the dead. Ooh, I want my mummy. Now, before we uncover one of the biggest secrets on our planet, please remember to subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell. That way, you'll be the first to see all the daily updates on the bright side of life. The Great Pyramid of Giza is called great for a reason. Probably because no one would show up to see the pretty good Pyramid of Giza, right? No, that's not it. This glorious construction was made with over 2 million stone blocks, each weighing from 3 to 30 tons. Actually, the most gigantic ones can be as heavy as 50 tons. The base of the Great Pyramid covers an area of 592,000 square feet and each of its sides is about 218,000 square feet in size. The outer layer of the pyramid consists of 144,000 polished casing stones that are around 8 feet thick and weigh no less than 15 tons each. Experts guess that it probably took over 20 years to build this monumental structure, and that's only if 20,000 workers arrived at the building site every day. So, do you really think that all this time, effort, and manpower was spent just to create a tomb, however glorified it might be? Well, modern historians have a different idea. They now believe that the Pyramid of Giza was built to serve as a power plant. That's right! And it makes sense, too. The Great Pyramid is vastly unlike any traditional tomb. There's no wall art, intricate coffins, flashy artifacts, or sealed doors. Not to mention, it's missing the most important thing that any tomb should have. A mummy. Or even a daddy. And if you let go of the stereotype that ancient civilizations were less developed than we are today, a question arises. Could the ancient Egyptians have had technologies as advanced as the modern ones? What if their knowledge was lost only to be rediscovered centuries later? What people know for sure is that, thanks to Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison, electricity turned into a widespread commodity at the end of the 19th century. But later, in 1934, an unexpected archaeological finding in Iraq proved that these, albeit great men, weren't the first to bring electricity to humankind. The discovery I'm talking about is known as the Baghdad Battery, or Parthian Battery. Now, this thing didn't have anything in common with modern batteries. It consisted of three parts – a ceramic pot, a copper tube, and an iron rod. When liquid acid was poured into this device, the resulting reaction produced an electric charge. Oh, and according to researchers, this battery was used over 2,000 years ago. This finding could explain the mystery of the elaborate gold plating that covers many ancient artifacts. You see, such plating can only be created with the use of electric power. As for the Great Pyramid, it's full of inexplicable mysteries itself. First of all, hidden inside, there are numerous tunnels leading deep underground. These areas still remain unexplored but is that missing mummy hanging out in there somewhere? Perhaps, but I doubt it. Also, the Great Pyramid of Giza was once covered with amazingly polished limestone. These casing stones were created in such a smooth manner that their surface was absolutely flat. As a result, the structure could reflect the rays of the sun pretty much like a mirror. An additional bonus was flawless insulation inside the pyramid. 
Interestingly enough, the Egyptians also used a special material, dolomite, on the inner sides of the pyramid. This mineral is known to multiply electrical conductivity, not to mention the underground tunnels and passageways that run throughout the inside of the pyramid are lined with somewhat radioactive granite. This granite contains a lot of metal and quartz crystals, both of which are great conductors of piezoelectricity. This type of electricity results from putting pressure on quartz. The granite used in the Great Pyramid would have ionized the air inside creating a particular chemical reaction which, in turn, increased the conductivity. All of these conditions provided the perfect opportunity for large electrical currents to appear. But hold on now, that's not all. I haven't even told you about the mortar yet. To build the Great Pyramid and keep those ginormous stones together, the ancient Egyptians needed more than half a million tons of this substance. Modern technology still can't recreate the gypsum-based mortar that was used during the construction of the pyramids. This type of gypsum withstands huge amounts of pressure. So this may sound bizarre, but the mortar holding them together is, in fact, stronger than the blocks of the pyramid themselves. Oh, and we can't forget about the sarcophagi that have been found inside the pyramid. For many years, researchers believed that these gigantic granite boxes were basically elaborate coffins for pharaohs. But these things were huge! They weighed at least 10 tons. One sarcophagus was so incredibly heavy that it was absolutely impossible to carry it through the narrow entrances and tunnels. It can only mean one thing. Uh, somebody measured wrong? No. It means that these boxes were originally built into the insides of the pyramid. The fact that their surface is absolutely flat, with variations within 10 thousandths of an inch, only backs up that claim. Plus, these coffins were just way too big for human beings, even if they were great and powerful pharaohs. In 1993, an inaccessible secret room was uncovered beneath the Great Pyramid. This room, which seemed to be deliberately concealed, was dubbed the Queen's Chamber. In 2011, thanks to more developed technologies, it became possible to explore the room with the help of a remote camera. What do you think they caught a glimpse of? The mummy of a queen? The solidly sealed secret chamber contained copper wire. Yep, and carefully crafted at that. There was also something resembling instructions accompanied by wiring diagrams drawn on the floor. So, if the conditions were right, keeping copper pieces in a windowless sealed room could result in a powerful release of electromagnetic energy. Granite, limestone, dolomite, copper. All materials that are especially efficient at conducting electricity. But it must be some sort of coincidence, right? Maybe those were just the only materials they had around when they were building the pyramids. Well, what do you think about the fact that most of the pyramids were built on top of perfect power generators, underground rivers? It's a proven fact that thousands of years ago, the Nile passed right through the area where the Great Pyramid stands. And if the water was indeed the source of power, the picture keeps getting clearer and clearer. You see, there's this thing called capillary action, or the capillary effect. It's the ability of water, or any other liquid for that matter, to flow upward into super narrow spaces, completely ignoring the pull of gravity. That being said, water from the river could technically slide up the pyramid's limestone surface and probably even reach the top. Its movement would cause vibration strong enough for the quartz inside the pyramid to create piezoelectricity. Remember, it's that type of electricity created by putting stress or pressure on quartz. This would generate a lot of electromagnetic energy that would move up all the way to the top of the pyramid. And at the top of the Great Pyramid of Giza, there used to be a capstone made entirely of gold. It forwarded a path to transfer negative ions – those are atoms with an electrical charge – to the ionosphere, the layer of the Earth's atmosphere that contains a ton of said atoms. 
And that's how an electric current of immense power was produced. Okay, great, but what was it used for? Well, ancient Egyptians weren't exactly using electric toothbrushes or anything. Some recent carvings depicting Egyptians carrying something that looks eerily similar to a light bulb. Hey, just check out the carvings in the Hathor temple. It shows people holding what appears to be a giant light bulb with a twisted wire inside that runs down into a cord and attaches to box that must be the receiver. Looks like modern electrical technologies to me. Another weird thing you can see in such carvings is what clearly looks like a wireless antenna. Perhaps the ancient Egyptians used wireless technology for communication purposes. They very well could have used electricity at weaving plants to manufacture yarn. What scientists know for sure is that the electromagnetic measurements taken around the Great Pyramid are similar to those taken during a lightning storm. If you climb up to the top of the pyramid holding a bottle covered in a wet cloth, you'd see sparks coming from the bottle. Hey, stay up there too long, and you might even see sparks coming from you. Ouch! Of course, there are still so many questions to be answered, and that's why research continues. But the power plant theory perfectly explains some bizarre phenomena that has been bothering historians and researchers for decades. It is just a theory, though. So, what do you think? Do you believe that pyramids could be something absolutely different from what we took them for? Tell us your theories in the comments below. And if you love mysteries and secrets as much as we do, hit the like button and stay with us on the Bright Side of Life!